وإن كتاب الله أوثق شافع وأغنى غناء واهبا متفضلا وخير جليس لا يمل حديثه وتردده يزداد فيه تجملا الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى I'm going to be starting a new series and in this series إن شاء الله تعالى I'm going to بإذن الله الكريم prove the preservation of the Quran but in order for me to do that I must have a couple of points clarified prior to inshallah ta'ala fulfilling that aim and objective in today's segment inshallah ta'ala or in this segment i hope to be in al kareem discuss and tackle five points be in al kareem i want to clarify these five points inshallah ta'ala and each point is necessary for the viewers and those who are listening to pay attention to it because when we come to the last and final segment or the last and final episode in which we will be speaking about the doubts that have been brought forward to claim that the Quran is not preserved if you haven't understood these points it's going to be very hard for you to understand the answers that are given against the orientalists against the uh, non-believers in general so inshallah ta'ala in this segment I am going to speak about five things inshallah ta'ala. The first inshallah ta'ala is I'm going to define the Quran and I'm also going to define the Qiraat and I'm going to mention the difference between the two if there is. So in the first part I'm going to speak about the definition of Quran and Qiraat and the difference between the two. In the second inshallah ta'ala I'm going to be speaking about how Ilm al-Qiraat came about. How did it evolve? How did it become the science that we see today? Inshallah ta'ala, the historical development of uh, Ilm al Qiraat, I will speak about it, Inshallah ta'ala. Number three, the importance of Ilm al Qiraat and the benefits of learning it, and the virtues that you get if you study and you learn it, will be the third part, Inshallah ta'ala. The fourth is the books, the treaties that have been authored in the science, the books and the uh, ilm, uh, the, the books and the treaties that have been written uh, regarding ilm al-qira'at, inshallah ta'ala. The fifth, inshallah ta'ala, is what does the hadith mean, unzil al quran ala sab'ati ahrufin? That the Qur'an has been sent down in seven ahruf. What does that mean? Those are the five, inshallah ta'ala, points that I'm going to discuss and tackle and explain inshallah ta'ala in this segment bi'idhnillah al kareem Let me start with the first one inshallah ta'ala which is uh, Quran, what does it mean? Qiraat, what does it mean? And what are the difference between the two of them? What is the difference between the two? Well, let me define Quran linguistically in the lexical meaning. The scholars, they have five views regarding what the Qur'an means in the Arabic language or what is, it, what is it rooted from? What was it extracted from? The word Qur'an. There are five views in the Arabic language. The first view is إِنَّهُ مَزْدَرْ It's a verbal noun from the word qara'a. The word Qur'an has been derived from the verbal noun qara'a. It's taken up from that verbal noun, that masdar qara'a, which means tala, recited. Like the word rujhan uh, and the word ghufran is. And then that verbal noun has been then uh, used as that masdar has then become used as a noun for the Qur'an, the speech of Allah. 
has been used a noun for the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the word of Allah that has come from him to our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the grammarians, they call this babu tasmiyatil maf'uli bil mazdar. The scholars, they call this naming the object, the verbal noun. The scholars, they call that. And they use two evidences for that, that this is what it's meant, that it came from the mazdar, the verbal noun qara'a, and it means the word tala, like rujhan and ghufran. They use two evidences. The first evidence that they used is qawluhu ta'ala, the statement of Allah, فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَهُ فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَهُ Here Allah Tabarakat Ta'ala, He said, فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ When we recite it in Muhammad, فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَهُ Here it means, أَيْ قِرَاءَتَهُ Follow its recitation. That's one evidence. The second evidence is, the statement of Hassan ibn Thabit, a noble companion, when he was praising Uthman ibn Affan for his ex... ex excessive prayer and his excessive recitation of the Qur'an he said about him يُقَطِّعُ اللَّيْلَ تَسْبِيحًا وَقُرْآنًا that he spends his whole entire night exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَقُرْآنًا here means a the recitation of the Qur'an so according to the first view the word Qur'an comes from the verbal noun qara'a and it means tala. That's what you need to know. The second view is innahu wasfun. It's an adjective. The word Qur'an is an adjective. In the form fa'lan mushtaq but it's taken from not the word qara'a but it's taken from the word qur, qur'i. It's taken from the word qur'i which means, according to the Arabs, al-jam'u, to gather something, to bring things together, okay? That's what the Arabs uh, mean by the word qur'i. Some, they, they, they say, qara'tu al-ma'a fil hawdi, yani jama'atuhu. I gathered the water in the hawd, the valley, or the fountain. The Arabs, they say that. And then it got utilized for the Book of Allah, the Qur'an. It got used for it, that's what they said. Why? Because they said the Qur'an, it gathers in it because it gathers inside it uh, chapters and it also gathers inside it verses. Okay? And the evidence they use for that is the statement of Amr ibn Kalthum, the poet, the pre-Islamic poet, who said, Hijanu Lawni Lam Taqra Janina. And yeah, a beautiful woman, okay, uh, who hasn't gathered in her stomach any child. She hasn't bear any child. And he used the word Lam Taqra. He, the word Lam Taqra here means a Lam Tajma. She hasn't gathered in her stomach. She hasn't had in her stomach a child. So, according to the first view, the word Qur'an, it's taken from a verbal noun, mazdar, qara'a, which means tala. The second view, on the other hand, no, it's a wasf, it's an adjective, in the form of fa'lan, Qur'an fa'lan. Mushtaq min madati qur'i, and it's taken from the, the word qur'i. It's taken from the word qur'i, which means a al jamma to bring something together, okay? And... These two views, the first view and the second view, uh, the word, um, the hamza is the asal in it. Like for example, qara'a, there's a hamza. Qur'i, there's a hamza. Both of those two first views, the hamza is al asal. Ridalika Ibn al Qayyim rahimahullah said, Lafdu al Qur'ani, ala hadayn al Qawlayni, al hamza tu fi asliya. The qara'a and qur'i, Ibn al-Qayyim says the Hamza in them both is an Asal. The third view now. The third view is that the word Al-Qur'an is not rooted from the word Qara'a, the Mazda Qara'a, and it's not rooted from the word Qur'i. It's actually rooted from the word um, Qarantu. When you combine between things. When you combine between things. So the word qarantu and the word al-jam'u kind of means the same. But there's a difference. 
And I'll mention what the difference is. يعني إنه مشتق من قرنت الشيء بالشيء إذا ضممته إليه وسمي القرآن به لأن الآيات والسور قرنت به قرنت فيه. So the word قرنت means to gather, to combine. That's what it means. It's similar to what الجمع, the, the second view. The only difference is the noon here is the asal, whereas the previous the, the previous choice the hamza was the asal. The fourth view. The fourth view is that the word مشتق من القرائن it was taken from the word القرائن. قرائن means indicator, indicator or clues. The word قرائن means something that indicates something, shows something, indicates something. Because they said that the Quran indicates things. يعني it's an evidence. The word قرائن, an indicator is an evidence, it's a proof. For the truthfulness of Nabi Muhammad. Or some of them they said no. What it is is al qarain it means that Yusaddiqu ba'duha ba'dan. The Quran strengthens one another. If one statement comes, there's another statement that backs it up. al ashbah wal nadair Resembling one another. According to the last two views, which is Qarantu shay'a bil shay'i ama al qarain Those two second views, the second, the second and the third view, the noon is the asal. ولذلك ابن القيم says ولفظ القرآن على هذين القولين النون فيه أصلية. The noon is the asal. Okay. The last and final view is a view held by Imam al-Shafi'i. Imam al-Shafi'i's opinion was أن لفظ القرآن اسم علم. That the word uh, Quran is اسم علم. What does اسم علم mean? It's a term that was found in this form. And it's not ala alam ghayra manqoolin. It's a name that is for the Quran and it has not been taken from something. It's not taken from the masdar qara'ah. It's not taken from the wasf of al qur'i It hasn't been taken qaran to shay'a bi shay'i. It's not taken from al qara'i None of that. Ibn Shafi'i say no. This word al Quran, hakada. It's a place for the Quran. Like the word a Torah and an Injil, Imam Shafi'i said, is a name for the Torah, and Injil is a name for Injil, and it hasn't been taken from anything, then term Al Quran hasn't been taken from anything. That's the fifth and final view. Shafi'i held that opinion, alayhi rahmatullah. And Al Imam Shafi'i is, as is said, is a hujjah in the, in the Arabic language, he's a proof. Whatever the case may be, whatever the case may be, the overwhelming majority of scholars are of the opinion that the Quran comes from Mazdar, the verb noun Qara'a, Yani Bimana Tala. And then they put second place the, the other view, which is it means it comes from the word Al Qur'i, which means Al Jama. And the Quran, both of those, it's uh, what it is according to the majority of scholars. Now, inshallah ta'ala, we're now gonna go into the definition of Quran technically. What does Quran technically mean? It means who al kalamul mu'jiz. Al munazzal ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al maktubu fil masahif al mankulu bit tawatur al mutabadu bitilawati. The word Quran is the speech of Allah. This is a technical definition. According to the ulama, the word al Quran. It is al kalamu. It's the speech of Allah. Kalamullah. Al mu'jiz. It's a miracle. And the previous prophets they came with miracles for their people to believe in them. Nabiullah Muhammad's miracle in which he came with for his people to believe in him is the Quran. It's a mu'jizah. And Allah wa ta'ala tahadda al Arab. It was a challenge that were put to the Arabs, the most eloquent of people. When Kuntu Firaibi Biman Zelna Ala Abidina, fat to be Surah in Mimitri, he would Rushuhada come in Duni Lahin Kuntum Sadiqin. If you're truthful in your doubts and in your speculation, and you think that you are right and Muhammad is wrong, then present something like his book. And he, they were saying it was his book. Then present something like what he came with. I mean, the Quran is not the book of the Prophet, it's, it's from Allah Azza wa Jalla. But produce something like it if you're truthful what you're saying. So they couldn't. So it's a mu'ajizah. 
Al Munazzali, it's been sent down on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Al Maktubu fil Masahif, it's written in the Masahif, the Mushaf that we have. Al Mankulu bi Tawaturi, it was transmitted to us by multitude narration. Al Mutabadu bi Tilawati, we worship Allah on these letters and wordings. And in the Quran, every single letter we worship Allah, we get closer to Allah by it. That's what it means technically. What does Qiraat mean linguistically and what does Qiraat mean technically? The word Qiraat, the word Qiraat is a plural. It's a feminine plural. It's called Jam'ul Mu'annafi Salim. In the Arabic language, there are three types of plural. There's Jam'ul Mudakri Salim, Jam'ul Mu'annafi Salim, and Jam'ul Taksir. Those are the three types of plural in the Arabic language. One of those plural are called Jam'ul Mu'annafi Salim. Feminine plural. Al-Qiraat is feminine plural. How do we know it is? It is because it finishes with alif and ta at the ending. Originally, yani the singular word that it comes from is Al-Qiraat. It comes from the singular word Al-Qiraat. So the word Al-Qiraat is a plural, it's a feminine plural, and it's taken from the singular uh, Al-Qiraat. And the word Al-Qiraat um, is the word al qiraah is originally taken from the root word of qara'a. So let me say that slowly. Al qiraat is plural. What's the singular? The singular is al qiraa. Al qiraa is the singular. So what is al qiraa rooted from in the Arabic language? What original word was it taken from? If I want to look it up, look it up in the dictionary. What word do I have to look it up? Because in the dictionary, they always mention the original, the asal, the, 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 uh, the root word they mention. So the root word is qara'a. Qara'a. Uh, so qara'a was what for us before we spoke about it? It's a masdar, it's a verbal noun. Uh, for the verb, it's a verbal noun for the verb. Um, Qara'a yaqra'u Qur'anam. And this has two word, two usages. It has two usages. Al-Qira'a fi'alah is being is used for two. The first one is al-jam'u wa dhammu, which we already mentioned, is to gather and to combine something. And the second one is at-tilawa, wa hiya nutku bil kalimati al-maktuba. And the Arabs they say, qara'tu al-kitaba ay talawtuhu. That's what it means linguistically. So according to scholars, the word Al-Qira'a, from the five views that we mentioned for Al-Qur'an, five views that we mentioned for Al-Qur'an, remember? What was the first one? The first view that we mentioned for Al-Qur'an was what? That the Qur'an is taken from the word? It's taken from the word Qara'a, right? And the word Al-Qira'at is taken from the word? It's taken from the word uh, qara. So from there, they are the same. Okay? And this is important that you understand it because it's going to help us later when we speak about the concept of is qira and the Quran one and the other. Technically, what does the word qira mean? Al qiraat, what does it technically mean? There are many defini definitions given regarding it. We are going to take the definition placed by. Imam al -fan, the Imam of this field, he died the year 833 Hijriya rahimahullah, al Imam al Jazari. He said, Qiraat is what? It is ilmun bi kayfiyati adai kalimati al Qurani wa khtilafiha ma'zuwa li naqilihi. He said, It's a science where a person learns the way and the manner to articulate and to pronounce. The wordings of the Quran, and it's also a science where you learn the differences, the variations of these recitations. Attributing each of those recitations to the person who read it in that way. That's Ilm al Qiraat. Nothing more, nothing less. Well, sometimes some people they mention about Ilm al Qiraat when they define it, issues which are known as. Uh, this is different to what Al Qiraat is. And Ibn al Jazari's definition is very good. And we'll stick to that, inshallah. 
So my beloved brothers and sisters, we've now learned what Quran means linguistically and technically. We've also learned what Al-Qira'at means linguistically and technically. We're now going to move on to the differences between the Quran and the Qira'at. The differences between the Quran and the Qira'at. According to the scholars, they have three views regarding is the Quran and the Qira'at one and the other. There are three views. The first view is the Quran and the Qira'at are two different things. They're two different things. The Quran is one thing and the Qira'at is another thing. This view, the reason why they held that opinion is because they said that the Quran is Al-Wahyu al munazzalu ala Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lil bayan wal ijaz. And the Quran is a revelation set from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala onto Nabiullah Muhammad and it was sent down to clarify matters for people and it was also sent down to show the people that they can't come with anything like this. As for Al-Qira'at, they said it is اختلاف الفاظ الوحي It's the differences and the variations that are present in the Quran. So they said there's two different things. This view is held by Imam Zarkashi, Shahabuddin Al-Qastalani, Imam Shahabuddin Al-Timiyati. Imam Badruddin Al-Zarkashi, who died in 794, and Imam Shahabuddin Al-Qastalani, who died in 923 Hijriya, and Imam Shahabuddin Al-Dimyati, who died in uh, 1117 Hijriya. Those three Imams, they said that Al-Qira'at and Al-Qur'an are two different things, and that was their argument. The second opinion is that the Qira'at and the Qur'an are one and the other. They're both the same. And the argument that they use is two things. The first argument that they use is that the Qira'at is originally taken from the Masdar of what? Qara'a, right? Al-Qira'at, the singular is Qira'a, Sah Al-Qira'a, and the word Al-Qira'a comes from the Masdar of Qara'a. And we just said that the word Masdar Qara'a is the same one that Al-Qur'an was taken from, which meant a tala recitation. So they said, look, linguistically it's the same. That's the first argument that they brought forward. The second argument that they brought forward is, they said the ahadith, al-ahruf is sab'a that we're going to mention later, inshallah ta'ala. They said that the ahadith al-ahruf is sab'a clearly and categorically show and indicate that there is no difference between al-Quran and al-Qira'at. And that's our evidence. We have a revelation to support this matter. That when we looked at the ahadith that speak about al-ahruf is sab'a, and we're going to speak about that inshallah ta'ala, they said it shows and it indicates that the Quran and the Qira'at are one and the other. Okay. The third and final view is tafsil. Tafsil means what? The Quran and the Qira'at are not one and the other. And they are also not different to one another. So what does that mean? We, it means we need to explain it. The Qira'at are two types. The Qira'at are two types. There is a Qira'a which is known as a Qira'a Maqbula, the accepted Qira'a. And the accepted Qira'a is what? It is the Qira'a which is mutawatira. It has been transmitted to us through a multitude narration. There's, it also, second thing that the Qira'a Maqbula, the accepted Qira'a has is, it agrees with the Arabic language. Walau It agrees with the Arabic language. It's in accordance to the Arabic language. And the third condition that it meets, the Qira, which is Maqbula, is توافق الرسم أحد المصاحف العثمانية ولو احتمالا It's in line with one of the Masahif of Uthman رضي الله تعالى عنه. As we're going to see later, Uthman said many Masahifs. It's in line with one of those Masahif ولو احتمالا That type of um, Qira'a, which is the Qira'a, which is Maqbula, it is obligatory upon every Muslim to believe this to be Qur'an. And it is upon every single person to recite this in their prayer to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on it. And it is this type of Qira'a, if you reject a letter of it, you're considered a disbeliever. This type of Qira'a, 
which is known as the Qira'ah, which is Maqbula. The Qira'ah, which is Maqbula. The Qira'ah, which is Maqbula, is a synonym of Al-Qur'an. The Qira'ah, which is Maqbula, Al-Qira'at, which is Maqbula, and the Qur'an are the same. Like in the Qira'ah, which is Marduda, rejected one, which is also known as Qira'ah, which is Shada, it's rejected as a Qur'an. So it's not the same as a Qur'an. It's not the same as a Qur'an. Because it lacks one of the three conditions we mentioned. It's either not mutawatir, or it's not in line with the Arabic language, walaw ihtimalan. It's also not in line with Rasul Ahad al-Masahif al-Uthmani, walaw ihtimalan. This one, we don't believe it to be Qur'an. We also don't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in prayer with this. And if you do, you get discipline for it. And this is the one Al-Imam uh, Ibn al-Jazari, rahimahullah, he said, فَكُلُّ مَا وَافَقَ وَجْهَ نَحْوِي وَكَانَ لِلْرَسْمِ احْتِمَالًا يَحْوِي وصح إسنادا هو القرآن فهذه ثلاثة الأركان وحيث ما يختل ركن الأثبت شذوذه لو أنه في سبعة He said رحمه الله فكل ما وافق وجه النحو anything that is in line with the Arabic language the Arabic grammar and everything ولو كان للرسم احتمالا يحوي and it's also in line with the رسم أحد المصاحف العثمانية and then he said وصح إسنادا هو القرآن and he conditioned the authenticity of the chain الإمام ابن الجزر رحمه الله has an opinion different to, or he has two opposite opinions. One in which he mentions in his Munjid al muqriin and one he mentions in his Nashr. And his Nashr is his last and final opinion, rahimahullah. In his Nashr, and the Tayyibat al-Nashr which I just recited, he holds Sihat al isnad the chain has to be authentically transmitted, and Shuhra, that it's famous, okay? He conditioned those two. Whereas in his Munjid al Muqri'in, he conditioned Sihatul Isnad with Tawatur, multitude narration. How do you reconcile the two opinions of Ibn al Jazari? We'll speak about that inshallah ta'ala. There's a wajh, there's a way to discuss that inshallah ta'ala. I'm going to mention it when I speak about the arkan of the accepted uh, recitation in more details. I'll speak about it there inshallah ta'ala. But for, for now, those three conditions أن تكون متواترة أن تكون أن توافق اللغة العربية ولو احتمالا أن توافق رسم أحد المصاحف العثمانية ولو احتمالا is what a قراءة which is مقبولة is okay وحي ثم يختل ركن أثبيتي شذوذه لو أنه في سبعة and if any one of those three conditions are missing this is called قراءة which is مردودة so this إن شاء الله تعالى answers the question which is is the Qur'an and the Qira'at the same? We say, if you're saying that the Qira'at which are maqbula, the Qira'at which are maqbula, those Qira'at are, is a Qur'an. And we believe it to be a Qur'an. The Qira'at which are marduda, the Qira'at which are marduda, we do not consider that to be a Qur'an. And inshallah ta'ala, I'm now going to go into the second point of our segment. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.